G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so Tuesday morning here in Australia, Monday morning has come and as I sort of suspected, there was uh, a bit of a dip to correct the CME gap that would have been uh, covered. I mean, I don't know 100% that that's exactly what happened, but there was definitely a CME gap that was uh, occurred over the weekend and Bitcoin, you know, was up getting close to sort of 59, 60,000 and quickly back down to sort of $54,000 again. And look, ETH is continuing to rise, getting up to 20%, Bitcoin dominance down to 42%, but look, ETH gas prices have returned. So that Berlin hard fork has not worked. <laughs> you know, who would have thought? It was good while those prices lasted. You know, congratulations to anyone that, you know, kind of took advantage of those. For me, I've just been holding. I haven't been sort of staking anything. You know, the prices have just yeah, been sort of way too much. Um, yeah, very disappointing. I'm, I'm really hoping that those, you know, gas fees you know get sorted with this e1.559 but i get the feeling like that's not even gonna uh bring them right down again we need these gas prices in the single digits so it'll be interesting to see at the moment what's caused the gas prices to go up is it because everyone was getting so uh heated up in the altcoin market or you know is there tons of stable coins being bought and moved around I really just don't know. It's hard to kind of gauge exactly what's going on. But look, 3.8% correction in the market overall. So we've definitely seen some things come down. All right. Has anything done really well in the last 24 hours? Have we only had any big movers to the upside? We have Pirate Chain. Good Lord. Uh, you know, please, if anyone's watching this, I don't know anything about Pirate Chain, but it just sounds so dodgy <laughs> already uh you know i could be completely wrong and hopefully you know something that i don't know and it's just one of those hype coins that you know everyone's just going to jump on and look if you can get into a hype coin and get out and make a whole lot of money excellent congratulations to you i try to stay away from that and i try to invest in things that have fundamental value and maybe pirate chain does i just i've not heard anything about it other than i've just seen the price kind of going up fairly crazy at times Right, uh, Telcoin uh, up a little bit, done pretty well. Again, Jesus, nearly 400% in the last seven days. I uh, don't know anything about Telcoin, so hopefully there's something good behind it. Leo Token, Uma, SafeMoon, God, this is scary. Uh, again, I don't know a whole lot about SafeMoon other than people said it was like a mad Ponzi sort of scheme going on, so people are still piling into it. So, yeah, buyer beware. Yearn Finance, and look, after that, we're now into the single-digit kind of gains, and then we get into the very low single-digit kind of gains fairly quickly, so not a lot to the upside, although some of the coins that did move to the upside have moved pretty well. You know, 18% is pretty good. Uh, again, 18% pretty good, and 20% pretty good as well, because that's all in a 24-hour sort of period. But again, the overall market is down, so let's have a look. What has not fared so well? Has anything been really knocked around in the last 24 hours? Dogecoin continues to go down a little bit, but look, still up for the week, so it's not all bad news. Bitcoin Diamond, again, I don't understand why people are buying that. I, I don't claim to know everything, so maybe there's information out there that I'm unaware of, but yeah, I wouldn't be doing that. Again, it's I think a lot of it's you know just because people are in a bull market and they're thinking they can kind of chuck money at anything and they're seeing things pump and jumping in and then likely getting burnt i hope that's not happening to uh, any of my viewers and anyone that's listening at the moment but yeah be careful phantoms down network omg network ontology theta network seems like it's been coming down for quite some time BitTorrent, tezos decentraland icon even v chain uh, had a fairly big uh, correction. No, not fairly big, but look, it's had a correction. It's only down 5.2% for the week, but twenty four the last 24 hours down and still going down now. Uh, big, massive fan of VeChain. Really love the project. Uh, you'd have to, you know, look at the charts to kind of work out whether it's time to get in. I mean, look, buy in the red, sell in the green. That's <laughs> kind of the very most basic you know, trading philosophy. And again, I never offer financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but you know, again, you'd have to look at the charts and decide, is this the time to buy? But this is when you want to sell when things are in the green and this is when you buy when things are in the red. 
But again, there's you know you still got to work out market cycles and things like that. It's not just as easy as that, but that's generally the basics uh, of it. Buy when everyone else is you know selling, and then sell when everyone else is buying. Hopefully for a profit. Uh, sometimes things don't always go that way, and you're just stuck. But again. That's life, that's trading, you're never going to win them all. So we can see, again, a, a, a lot of, you know, losses here. Like, they just, you know, continue to go down. And a lot of double-digit losses and things like that. Like, even the graph continues to go down. Had quite a steep sell-off. So, again, for me, I mean, I, I like the graph and I'm <laughs> I'm buying the graph. Uh, and Polygon, it was up over a dollar. It just tipped over and now it's having a retracement. And that's what I thought would happen. It would be that psychological barrier of a dollar. Gets to a dollar and then people are going to be like, yep, that's a really good price, particularly, you know, if you bought in at two cents, three cents, five cents, ten cents, even fifty cents, you know, you've doubled your money and all the rest of it. So I wouldn't be surprised if Polygon uh, sees a fair bit of a, a pullback and maybe even getting down to kind of around the 70 cent mark that might be you know a bit bigger of a pullback than uh what can sort of be expected but you know 75 70 cents ish you know 20 30 percent pullback you know from that high uh would not be uh unheard of so we'll have to keep a look out for that all right so again yep markets down a little bit 3.8 percent we're still you know hovering around that kind of 2.5 trillion dollar mark nearly not quite there this was uh two six uh three four when i originally looked at it sort of 20 30 minutes ago so oh excuse me continuing to go down but not everything is lost and i mean ethereum uh, has done done so well and i think it got to four thousand and ten dollars so it definitely has had a bit of a correction already and as we're going to see it is quite it's high to the upside at the moment so let's have a look i mean this is the 50 day moving average and since the 24th of april i mean it has just been rocketing up so i wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be a bit of a correction coming sometime soon I don't know how big it's going to be. And look, it may not even come. It may have to get to nearly $5,000 before we, you know, see any sort of corrections. But it's just, it's definitely a little bit overheated at the moment and way, way off the 50-day moving average. And, you know, we can see that it really kind of generally hovers around the 50-day moving average and doesn't get too far away from it. And when it does, though, it's generally going to correct. Again, we get up here and then we come back down. So for me, 50-day moving average is currently at about $2,408. I don't think we're going to come back there. I think we're definitely going to see a bit of a correction. Again, maybe we come down to somewhere sort of around about here, you know, just uh, around that $3,000 mark. And then we get a bit of sideways movement waiting for the 50-day moving average to sort of catch up. That's what I'd sort of suspect might happen. But again, there's no guarantees in life. All right, Ethereum against Bitcoin. Uh, is this Ethereum? Yep, against Bitcoin. Again, very sort of, I won't say overvalued, but it's way off that kind of 50-day moving average at the moment. So, I w again, I expect to see a bit of a pullback. And again, maybe we get down to sort of here and against the dollar value, that's about kind of the $3,000 mark. I mean, that's a 20 sort of 5% correction. Again, not unheard of. Not saying that's exactly what's going to happen. Maybe it's less. Again, you know, we go over the USD pairing. Maybe it gets down to sort of about here, 3,250, 3,300 thereabouts, where it's had some other sort of support and resistance before. But look, it is completely possible that it just keeps going up. I'm just not sure. I get the feeling like it's had its really big move. It's going to come back consolidate. And I really do think Bitcoin uh, is getting ready to make a move. It can't hang around this kind of the 50-day moving average $55,000 mark forever. So let's have a look at Bitcoin. So again, there's the 50-day moving average. Now it's a little bit under the 50-day moving average at the moment. And look, it wicked all the way down to what's that 53,500. But it's quickly being pushed up and it you know again look at this how long now what's this 30th of april so we're nearly getting on to sort of two weeks where bitcoin has just been hanging around that 50-day moving average at some stage one's going to take over either the selling pressure is going to take over and the buyers sort of dry up and can't hold it up anymore or vice versa the people who are selling 
can't keep up with the amount of people who are buying and I think that's probably more going to be the case but look again time is the biggest is the best storyteller it knows better than anyone and unfortunately it means we have to wait for it to have happened before we know uh, you know what the outcome was that's why a lot of this is just a guessing game it's people looking at charts ch charts <laughs> charts uh, social sentiment and things like that and then making a decision about whether they think things are going higher uh, and so they hold or whether they think things are going to sell uh, and then they start to take profits or you know some people unfortunately sell for losses and things like that so that is what I'm looking uh, at at the moment. The 50-day moving average is just the key. Again, I, I don't have the 100-day moving average on here at the moment. Uh, I don't really need it because the 50-day moving average is just the key. Should we break down and start to come down, like you know, more than one sort of daily close? Again, you know, we have this one daily close, then it gets back up. Again, I'm looking for something like this, multiple daily closes. Then I go back looking for the 100-day moving average and start to look for where I think it might bounce. And then again, if the 100 day moving average, which I think will be strong support, starts to have multiple closes going down below, then same thing, I'll bring in the 200 day moving average and look. All right, a ton of stories to get through. We won't have a look too much more at the charts. That's pretty much it. All right, Gary Gensler. He's uh, come out and made some statements about cryptocurrencies. So the new chairman of the uh, US Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC, uh, has shared his views on how the SEC plans to regulate cryptocurrencies, and particularly Bitcoin. He calls Bitcoin a digital scarce store of value and stresses the need to put in place some investor protections for this asset class. And we brought some news similar to that. But this is what I found interesting. We will be working with Congress, and if they see fit, to try to bring more protection for people that want to invest in this speculative asset class. Speculative, I found very interesting that he said that. And again, if Congress see fit, I think they will. I think it's you know, pretty much guaranteed. Uh, the fate's been sealed, it is going to be regulated. And look, there's reasons that you know we want more regulation. Again, I've said this multiple times, not over-regulation, but we do need regulation. You know, KYC and things like that. And here's a story why. So US authorities seek court order to shut down crypto trading platform allegedly duping thousands of investors. This is the kind of protection that we need. So New York Attorney General uh, Letitia James is seeking a court order to immediately shut down the operations of cryptocurrency exchange Coinseed. The Attorney General previously filed a lawsuit against the crypto exchange, but the platform allegedly continued to operate and dupe investors. And here's what was happening. This company has continued to operate illegally, holding investors' funds hostage so they wouldn't release them, and conducting unauthorized trades in investors' portfolios while depleting accounts and transferring virtual currency to an offshore, unregulated trading platform. So again, imagine you know, you've know you signed up to this exchange and your funds, you know, they're again, you know, trading you know, without your permission, I'm going to say that you that you probably never had your permission, and your funds have been moved offshore where it's unlikely, uh, or not unlikely, but it's possible that you may never get these back. These are the kind of things that need to be, you know, jumped on quickly, and we need better regulation to protect, you know, people against this. So hopefully, no one that is listening to my uh, video is one of these people that uh, put their, you know, hard-earned money into Coinseed and are now. You know, maybe losing. I hope. I hope not. But again, I'd say if um, the attorney generals have gone this far, I'd say it's probably again guaranteed that this is actually happening. Something concerning it makes me think that we are getting closer to you know the end of the bull run. I don't know exactly when it's coming, but Chinese crypto traders are pouncing on Shibcoin, known as the Doge Killer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Buyer beware. We talked about this the other day. I think Shib. Uh, SHIB was up 730, 740% uh, over the last sort of week or so or something like that. So this is that mania kind of stage and where people are chucking money at things that don't have any real fundamental value or prospects or anything. And it's just, it's all hype based. And yeah, beware, you know, lucky for you if you got in nice and early and watched the coin pump 730%, that's awesome. But yeah, these almost always and badly eventually and you know again i hope that anyone that's listening is able you know if they're doing this they can get in and get out and double their money and you know whatever i'm not doing it and i don't recommend it 
please i'm not saying i hope you know you do it i'm just saying i hope that if you are getting into it you're able to be one of those lucky people that can do it because unfortunately there will be some poor you know i don't want to say sucker because that's not a nice word but some poor person who's you know holding these bags when they inevitably just crash and go to nothing and i'm not saying actual dogecoin will do that you know maybe the people have spoken like i said and it's here to stay but shiv this is literally just a copycat and i don't know how that makes it any better all right morgan uh, creek capital they are saying bitcoin can reach 250k in five years I mean, there's people saying that it'll reach that, you know, sometime in the next, you know, sort of few months. So look, even if it's five years time and you're buying it at sort of 55,000, you're nearly 5Xing your money. You can't sort of, you know, throw shade at that. Like, again, I don't know what stock you're going to go into uh, that in five years time is going to 5X its money. Don't get me wrong, there are stocks that can do it. But Bitcoin, yeah, I mean, most people... Uh, in this crypto space have much higher price targets for Bitcoin uh, than that, particularly in the next five years. I mean, the next five years, if crypto stays where it is, we'll be at this peak, well, we'll actually be beyond this peak uh, in the next bull run. So again, I guess it depends on where Bitcoin gets to. So far, we've had a lot of trouble cracking that 60K mark, and we definitely are sort of not quite there to get over that 100K mark, and I think that will really be important to see whether Plan B's you know, stock-to-flow model plays out and we get to that you know, 288K Bitcoin oh, excuse me. Uh, in this bull run. But look, I guess in five years' time from now, again, if the cycles play out the same, Bitcoin could be in its next bear market. So if they're saying it'll get to 250K at sort of the bottom of the next bear market, that wouldn't be surprising to me. Uh, and again, that still means, you know, that if you're getting Bitcoin now, according to Do uh, Morgan Capital, you know, yeah, you've got a minimum of a 5X and possibly a whole lot higher. But again, no one really knows. It's all just a guessing game. All right. So UBS, the Swiss multinational investment bank, UBS Group AG, is reportedly in the works of launching several cryptocurrency services. The trend of giant banks developing crypto services has expanded beyond the US with the Switzerland UBS uh, Group AG. The institution plans to enable its wealthy customers exposure to digital asset investments later this year. I don't know why everyone's coming out and they're only, not everyone, but a lot of groups. Anyway, it's only the wealthy customers that they're letting buy at first. I don't know why they wouldn't just go, right, yeah, there it is for everybody. But it, yeah, it seems that, you know, they want you to have a minimum of so much money before they'll let you invest. And again, I don't understand the method behind that. I would just put it out there to everyone and say, right, yeah, there it is, you know, however much money you've got and you're willing to invest, cool. I can only imagine it's going to, you know, push the price up either way. But again, I'm sure... You know, they, there's some logic behind it and they probably they want the big money in first to then, you know, unfortunately get the, you know, this, again, what they call the dumb money, but I'm going to call it the new money, the retail money to come in after that and all their wealthy clients do really well and hence why they continue to bank with them. Because look, you know, if the little guy jumps in and buys some Bitcoin for unfortunately $150,000 or whatever and it goes down, they don't generally take all their money out and run off and find someone else. Most little guys will just stink with, stick with the bank no matter what, whereas big clients, they will move quickly if they're not performing well. So my guess is that that's what this is about. They want their you know, big, uh, big earner clients to come in, get in at the early stage, and then watch it kind of go up. So then when they sell, they just make money and they don't really lose money. That's, that's my guess. Again, that's, yeah, that's all it is. It's a guess. That's what I think is what's going on. Right, institutional uh, buyers are quite possibly behind Ethereum pumping super high, and, and I would tend to agree with this. Um, although numerous, numerous factors are going in Ethereum's way, the largest surge above, surge above 4,000, again it was 4,010, could be largely attributed to institutional investors, say CryptoQuant. Ethereum continues to steal the show from the larger cap alternative coins with consecutive all-time highs. The latest one took it a set above 4,000, so it's down 3,900 at the moment. While many speculate on the possible reason behind East performance, on-chain data suggests institutional investors, I don't know if it's to blame, but they're just getting in. You know, They start in Bitcoin, 
once they understand it then they start to move into the altcoins and it'll be ethereum first and again they just slowly make their way down the line uh you know that's how most people get into altcoins it's bitcoin first then ethereum and then again all the altcoins after that so crypto quant ceo uh Ki Yong Ju outlined a significant premium on Coinbase, which he believes is among the most pro probable reasons behind Ethereum's price surge. Institutional investors, especially those based in the US, typically do their crypto shopping on the largest local exchange. The emergence of a high premium on Coinbase, excuse me, compared to other exchanges, indicates a strong spot buying pressure on the US trading volume. So. Ethereum's really getting bought up on Coinbase and uh, it's at a premium and so it's likely institutional investors getting in. So yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Ethereum is not exactly cheap at the moment. Uh, again, it's the mindset that you have to understand from retail buyers. It's not that they won't buy any of these things that are worth you know a whole lot, you know, like thousands of dollars, but it's just that mindset of again, not you know, not overly smart money. And I go, all right, I need two thousand, you know, five hundred dollars or four thousand dollars to buy one of them, and I've only got like maybe seven hundred dollars to invest. Well, I'm going to go find something that I can get at least seven hundred coins for. And so, you know, when these big coins start to move, a lot of the time it is institutional investors. I'm saying there's not that. I'm not saying that there's no retail coming in, but they're generally that's why you're seeing the crazy prices of Doge and you know, SHIB and, you know, all these other coins, you know, absolutely rallying because that's what the, you know, the new money's doing. They think that they're going to find the next Bitcoin for a couple of cents and watch it go to the moon. And look, some people in the Doge space absolutely have done that. Although I'm not saying Doge is a new Bitcoin, but they've seen unbelievable gains. All right, Ubisoft. So Horizon Blockchain Games, Non-Fungible uh, and others join the Game Publishers Entrepreneurs Lab initiative, which has prominent crypto gaming alumni. So they unveil the next batch of crypto startups it plans to help grow. So major game publisher Ubisoft has added five new crypto startups to its Entrepreneurs Lab Accelerator program. Past members include startups behind rising Ethereum-based crypto games like, uh, I'm not even sure how to pronounce that, Sorare. Uh, and Axie Infinity. The publisher behind massive game franchise like Assassin's Creed and Just Dance has not only released a couple uh, of its own experimental crypto game projects to date, but also supports many startups in the space. So again, the crypto space right across the board continues to grow. You know, there's DeFi, uh, non-fungible tokens, so NFTs, uh, blockchain stuff, you know, like uh, VeChain and supply chain and all sorts of things like that. And businesses are just coming in left, right and center and taking advantage of it. They can see what's happening. All right, two reasons why Casper IOU token rallied 2,300% in one week. All right, CSPR appears to be following DOT's route to success as its IOU token launched onto the bull market's momentum and rallied 2,300% before it even listed on major exchanges. Now, again, anyone who's new back in 2017, these coins that came out really late, you know, they pump really hard and then they dump so hard when we go into the next bear market. So again, you know, just buyer beware. You know, I'm buying stuff now with the complete thought process of I'm going to sell in the next few sort of months. Because I know come the, well, I don't know, but again, based on what's happened previously on my previous history, I know that again, let's say I'm buying, you know, Casper Pro project and they said it came out at three cents and it's up 2,000%. So it's probably around sort of 20 cents uh, or something now, $2. I'm not even sure what 2,003% uh, worth of uh, three cents is worth, but it'll probably go back down to near three cents or five cents in the next bear market. So whatever price it is now, just buyer beware. It continues to rally. So Casper is a proof of stake black blockchain platform. So let's find out what it is. Uh, its token value has made significant gains since the end of its initial coin offering on April 7th. So that was only a month ago when early investors were able to acquire the coin for three cents. So CS. PR. Let's go and have a look. What's it trading at now? CSPR. 
Fletch no dark. There we go. So they were buying it at three. Good lord, there we go. Oh, I was way off thinking, you know, 30 cents, two dollars. Eighteen dollars. Holy cow, if you bought that for three cents, that is unbelievable. So again, this coin come the next bear market is most likely gonna retrace oh so hard. Like really hard. So again, just beware anyone who's new to this, you know, whole you know, kind of space things tend to get a little bit out of hand. I mean again, look, uh, RLC rallies four hundred percent after big name collaborations and Coinbase listing. Again, I can't offer you financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor. But at the moment, based on you know the cycles, how they've played out previously, anything you're buying is likely to dump really hard from here, including you know all the big coins. Uh, you know it depends, particularly you know these small ones anyway that are all just new. You know I saw so many coins come out late in the 2017 rally, and you know they started at a dollar and then made it all the way up to twenty thirty dollars and by the time the bear market came next time they were as low as a few cents so that's what i think is going to happen all over again so i'm not sort of chasing these kind of things i've made my plays i'm happy to keep investing in some of those uh but with the plan again i'll I will basically sell 50% of pretty much everything I have except for Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum. I might hold on to a little bit more than 50% of my Ethereum because I was lucky enough to buy those at good prices that you know, even the most brutal bear market I don't think will come down anywhere close to the prices that I got those at. But that's just me. So, all right, major exchange listings and real-world collaborations with Google, IBM, have sparked a 400% rally in the price of RLC. So again, I wouldn't be chasing this. Uh, I would wait for some kind of correction. And again, do some research about whether you want to you know, hold this long term and all the rest of it. All right, this one's been going for a while, so I'm just gonna jump to this last story. Small banks building Bitcoin services to keep customers. This is, this is the future, this is what's gonna start to happen. So two small Californian banks First National First Fund Foundation Bank in Irvine and Suncrest Bank in I don't even know how to say that, are uh, with the help of technology partners quietly building the capability capability for customers to buy, sell, and hold Bitcoin. Account holders would be able to manage and monitor their crypto holdings alongside their checking, savings, and other traditional bank products. This is the way of the future. And again, even the little banks are starting to do it. It'll be all the banks that will basically be doing this in the very near future. And crypto exchanges will be doing very similar stuff. They're basically going to become banks and partnered with banks and things like that. All right, that's a bit of a long one today from me. A lot of news to get through. And like I said, I'm not, you know, doing anything crazy with my money at the moment. I'm still investing into the things I think have fundamental value. But even that, with the prices they are at the moment, I'm going to sell 50% of it because I think they're going to go down so much lower in the next bear market. Outside of Ethereum, I, I bought most of my Ethereum for sort of under $300. I don't think we're ever going to see that again. I've bought some Ethereum over $300, and that's the Ethereum that I plan to sell. Likewise, with my Bitcoin, you know, I, I bought most of it under sort of about $12,000. You know, the average price of around $8,400 is sort of where I got it. Again, I only wish I could have invested more. But anyway, I don't know if I'll sell much of my Bitcoin at all because I don't think we'll ever see it at those prices again. But look, it all depends. What happens if Bitcoin, you know, caps out at, 80,000, that's the peak. We don't get to the 100,000 or the 200, 300,000. We could, in fact, see Bitcoin down at around $5,000 at the bottom of the next bear market. Totally possible. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. If you're on that gain train at the moment, you've done pretty well, you've outdone the market, and I'll see you next time.